Hello and welcome to Energy Readings with Shelby Aesthetic. Thank you everyone for coming tonight. Um, tonight I'm by myself and I'm going to do a little bit of topic discussion and then I'm going to do some readings if there are, um, if there's anybody out there that wants, wants any readings. Um, but I wanted to, um, to talk about a couple of things first um, that I had gotten a couple of emails. So I, um, I wanted to kind of discuss some of those things, um, questions that people had. Um, before I get started, though, I want to um, thank everybody for coming to the show tonight. And um, if you want to connect with me, you can find me on Twitter at Third Eye Betty. I'm also on Facebook. You can just type in Third Eye Betty or go to Energy Readings with Shelby Aesthetic and you can connect with me there. Um, I also have a website, thirdeyebetty.com, that you're welcome to look at. It talks a little bit about me. Um, and how I see and it has some of my artwork on there and some other things. So if you'd like to connect, I would love to connect with you however, um, however you want to. Um, additionally, I wanted to uh, kind of throw out a, a few things that are going to be coming up for July. So next Wednesday is um, Independence Day in America. So we will not be um, having a show that night because I'm going to be um, taking my kid to go watch some fireworks. But on July 11th, I have uh, psychic medium Renee Richards on the show. And then on the 18th, I've got Kathleen Moore. Um, she's going to be showcasing some of her amazing, um, amazing stuff that she's selling, gems. She's got all kinds of cool stuff. And she's uh, an excellent psychic medium also. So um, we'll have her on to, do, um, to showcase some of her stuff and to do some readings. I actually... I'll show you for you guys that are in the chat room. Got this um, from her, this gigantic crystal ball. I bought that from her. Um, and it's such a, I love it. It's so cool. She's, it's like my favorite little thing. So she sits right here by my desk. It'll be cool one night we can do, um, we can do, I need a fortune teller hat. <laughs> I, we can do a, a, like a divination night, you know, where we do, um, I don't know, whatever we want, we can do coffee readings and uh, crystal ball readings and tarot readings. So I do, I have lots of fun stuff um, coming up that's planned. I think in the beginning, um, the first couple of weeks of the show, or I guess I should say the first couple of months of the show, I kind of wanted to um, just get my feet wet and see how things are going to go and have some people on. Um, most of you know the people that I've had on. I've just, I, I had them on because they've been, a big support group to me this whole time. So um, it's been important. It's been important for me, I feel like, to give back also. Um, okay, so here's a couple of things that I wanted to talk about um, for tonight's show. I get emails sometimes from different people asking me questions, um, not just through email, but um, through an, another uh, platform where I do reading, sometimes I'll get messages there. And I, and I just, I collected a couple of them because they're sort of the same questions that I see um, pretty regularly. And so I feel, I felt like it was important to maybe um, talk about these things because obviously it's on, not only because it's on people's minds, but because I also, um, I had very, very similar questions um, when I was first starting out um, with my own spirituality. Uh, the first question, and probably this one I've gotten several times, is how do I stop other people's energy from affecting me so much? Uh, people that are sensitive to energy, I think, um, well, at least from my perspective, I, I feel like uh, a good grounding, um, centering and clearing um, routine really helps with that. And of course, you can Google, <clears throat> you know, how to ground or how to center and how to clear. There's so much information out there uh, to the point where it can almost be overwhelming. So I would really say that if to do those processes, to work with energy, to find something that that works well with you and that you enjoy and that you like. There's tons of different ways to ground yourself. And it can be um, anything from uh, visualization techniques, a simple walk into the woods, um, I know for me, if I'm doing um, like laundry or repetitive housework or stuff like that, a lot of times it, it does center me and it grounds me. It puts me in the right now. Um, but without that, obviously, if you're going, uh, if you're going to be at, 
I mean, the worst place in the world, like the mall or Target or someplace like that, where there's tons of people and all their all their energy and all their energetic gunk with them. Um, it's really easy to sort of pick stuff up like that, especially if you're uh, empathic because your energy, yeah, the way I see it, usually it's like fingers almost that come out of the energy and it just why it it just touches everything. So, uh, you know, I can feel what you you can feel and you can feel what I can feel and, and you get lost into knowing, well, what is my energy and what is someone else's and, and where's the discernment and, and how do I figure out what belongs to me and what belongs to them. And it's it's a lot of work. Um, and it's not hard work, it's just consistency and it's doing it often to understand and I'd be able to identify your your own energy versus what uh, what someone else is feeling. I know if I look back in my past, I, there have been uh, people that I, you know, I've hooked up with and later in I've been like, what was I, I thinking, you know, I, there was, I never really enjoyed that person's company or, you know, something like that. And more often than not, I, I have found that with situations like that, I, I got lost in someone else's emotions. Um, not that I, you know, haven't made some really poor decisions because, oh, believe me, I have. But I think for, um, <laughs> you know, for, for uh, making a point uh, that it's important to kind of look at all those things and to do. I like to look back at my past a lot to um, reflect, I should say, back on the way um, how I've handled situations and the way things were, because it's learning moments. Um, and centering is also really <clears throat> is also really important because we're not. Um, everything has a center point. I mean, a circle, everything does. So, I mean, you know, if you're, if you're talking about uh, geometric shapes, even, I mean, everything's got a, a point of, uh, in the middle and, you know, I usually will center at my heart. And again, I do this through, um, I do this through vis visualization, but there's, there's a lot of different methods um, to do that. Um, and then clearing, I use an etheric tornado, um, and some other things, a violet fire that I use to, to clear my energy out. And I, I, I will push other people's energy um, out of myself. So so say, for instance, uh, um, Joan said, well, what, what do you visualize? So say, for instance, I want to um, prepare myself to go to a, a party. And I know there's going to be lots of people there. So before I even go, I want to set my intention that I'm going to ground and center myself. That's that's. My goal is to stay in my own energy. Uh, so I get into a meditative state and I'm going to get to some meditation processes here in just a minute, but I'll get to um, a meditative state and I'll have my eyes closed sometimes and I will start to uh, feel the energy in my heart. I will visualize uh, my heart chakra in the middle of my heart chakra and I will visualize pulling my energy into a point right in right at the heart. Um, so I pull my energy into my heart. Um, and then when I'm ground, I push the energy from my heart chakra all the way down. It goes uh, it goes through, you know, straight down perineum, down my legs. And um, some people have different symptoms. Some people don't feel anything. I feel a, a hard throbbing in my feet when I know that the energy is going down. Uh, and I push it all the way down into the center of the earth, and that's where I anchor it. And this is all uh, at what I'm imagining in my mind. Um, there's no, there's no wrong way. Uh, to, in my personal opinion, there's no wrong way to do these things. Uh, I, I don't think that you can. Um, I, now, I think you might not be able to ground very well, or you might not be able to um, figure out how to stay grounded. But that's all part of the learning process. Uh, anyway, when I'm down there, I anchor down and because uh, grounding is a big deal for me. I had uh, lots of social anxiety and I had tons and tons of problems with uh, not being able to discern my own feeling from other people. I'd, I would suddenly feel angry or suddenly feel sad and I didn't I didn't have a good reason or I would just get real irritated. Uh, you know, and if you're in a traffic jam and you're feeling irritated, obviously it's because you're stuck in traffic, but everyone else is feeling that too. So how much of it is yours and how much of it is theirs is, you know, is up for debate. Um, but anyway, I will anchor it down to the earth and then I pull, I pull the energy back up into my heart. So it's almost like it fuses with the heart of the earth my heart and the earth's heart, they sort of fuse together. 
and I pull back up and I do this breathing. I'll pull back up. Uh, the easiest way for me is I breathe in through my mouth and I or in through my nose and I pull it up. And once it's in my my heart chakra, I will push it back up. It goes up through my crown all the way up to source, which um, can be wh whatever, however you visualize it. Uh, God, source, um, the sun, Jesus, whatever, whatever you connect with, whatever you understand as source, you can you can do that. A ball of light. Um, and I do the same thing. I go into the center of the source energy and I anchor in. And I fuse all of our hearts together and I pull it back down into my heart and push it down once more into the earth, um, the center of the earth. I like to go all the way down. This helps me to uh, feel a lot more at ease. So when I leave the house, I, I automatically at this point, I automatically feel <clears throat> like I'm going to be like I'm like, I don't know if any of you guys have um, social anxiety, but. Uh, for me, just the just leaving the house sometimes um, it's like a train wreck, <laughs> right? Because because of the anxiety and um, the, for after practicing that, I mean, it was almost it was almost within it was probably the same week the first time I started practicing that particular method. Uh, I really felt a huge difference, and so I you know so I do that, and then I'm at this point I can leave the house. And a lot of the thoughts and the worry, uh, it start it starts evaporating. So it is, or if they're there, they're not penetrating as deeply into my energy. And I think as uh, as we are evolving, humanity is evolving. Um, we're going through our whole evolution process. I think that we are going to learn more and more ways uh, and try to, and come to more and more understandings that we're not just feeling ourselves. We're feeling everything and everyone else around us and we're becoming more and more sensitive as uh as a society and as a race and not just to you know topics but to energy and energy is everything so once i'm once i'm nice and grounded and i make sure i'm centered i like to clear myself i go do my shopping or go do whatever i need to do um, and when i get back or even on the way home I will run the etheric tornado through me. And that's usually uh, I'm visualizing a it's it's a tornado that's huge that comes right out of the center of source and it comes through the top of my crown. And it does the same thing as I do when I'm grounding and I let I just whip it through my entire body and it pushes out way outside of myself. So basically what's happening is I'm pushing out everything outside of my energetic field. I'm pushing it out so I'm not going to carry it with me anymore. Uh, and I use that etheric tornado constantly. I do it several times a day, especially if I'm out doing things. I use it in my house to clear my house because I live in an apartment. And, uh, you know, I can feel my my neighbor downstairs and I can feel my neighbor ac across the way, my neighbor over there. So there's um, and, and it's not it's not that it's a bad thing. It's just. I don't want to feel them. I want to, feel, I, want, I want, this is my space. Um, but I'll, so I'll clear my house that way. I clear my child that way. Um, and it's, and it feels in the, in the beginning, you may not feel anything. So it may just be a visualization. I actually told somebody not too long ago, I, when I have trouble uh, visualizing, especially in the very beginning, I would draw a little stick figure on a piece of paper uh, and I would just run my hand down that stick figure because in, in my mind, it was helping me with the process of clearing. So that's another way you can do it. Um, but be creative and imagine it's, if it's your energy and you can flush it out however, however you want. There's tons of different uh, there's tons of different of different methods. But more importantly, um, anything doing anything like that is better than doing nothing. So if you can, um, if you can. Uh, try some of those methods for kind of clearing and doing the centering and all that other stuff. Um, and let me know there's <clears throat> actually another um, show on Intuitalk. Excuse me, called the Teaching Tuesday show with Renee Richards, who's going to be my show in July. Um, and in her archives, there's um, there's tons of different uh, 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 podcasts on there 
but there are a few in particular that uh, she, I mean, it's there. It's amazing. That's it's gold. Basically. I uh, remember when I was first, um, you know, coming into the realization of my own spirituality and I, I would listen to some of those on repeat sometimes because it was, there's just so much information. Um, you can listen to it over and over and over again. And every time you're getting more information. So I think the biggest part is to take it slow uh, to, to know that there's no wrong way to do this at all, that uh, you're, you're free to, that it's your energy and you own it. But so here's the thing, though. Once you once you understand that you're in charge of your energy and no one else is, you sort of pass the line of being able to blame anyone else for anything uh, for your reactions, because at that point you you're you're beginning to come into control of yourself and which is a beautiful thing. Uh, but there, but it comes with some tough lessons sometimes, you know, um, I know when my wife and I, um, I know when she's upset before she says anything and it's not because of <clears throat> anything specific she's doing. It's because energetically I know she is. So I, I have to, I have to take those things and, and understand that, but everybody's got to be where they are and everybody's entitled to feel and do what they want to. So I can't, you know, force her to talk to me about what's going on or choke slam or I'm just kidding or do anything like that. I have to, uh, I have to remember that that belongs to her and those are her feelings. Uh, and instead of letting them affect me. Uh, okay. Another, another question was how can I overcome my fear of being wrong when I'm giving a reading? Um, I thought this was a great question because uh, I identified with it very well, especially in the beginning when I was doing readings, I was, I was, I didn't, you know, giving readings comes with responsibility. Uh, well, at least for me, it does. I, ethically, I don't uh, believe in making anything up. Um, I, if I can't, if I can't connect with somebody, I tell them I can't connect with them. Um, if I'm not picking up information from somebody or, or I'm seeing something that's really strange that I don't understand, I try to tell them anyway, because I feel like all processes of information are coming to me for a reason. And ethically, it's my responsibility to, to see and say what I, what I hear or, or see or know. Um, and, and with that, there comes the fear of what if I tell somebody the wrong thing? Um, and just in my, my experience, which hasn't been you know, decades or anything, but in my experience, it's like anything else with any other job or any hobby or any part of life. Um, it's okay. It, you, if you can't get it all right all the time, um, information comes to you the way it comes to you for a reason. I, I used to be, uh, I used to work with bonsai. Um, and it was one of my favorite parts of my job. And these are trees um, that are miniaturized basically. And, and a real bonsai isn't, uh, isn't necessarily grafted. It's a tree that over time, um, it's a full grown tree, but you train it with these little roots that come out at the bottom instead of the big thick ones that you see when they're planted in nature. Um, <clears throat> but they're, they're super finicky and they're in really tiny shallow pots. And if you can imagine cramming a ginkgo into a little tiny pot, you know, and training it to do all kinds of weird stuff and you know most of the time they die uh, and I was getting so upset about this and this this lady uh, she had been working with bonsai she she had been a she was trained in Japan she was the first uh, female that was trained as a bonsai master in this some bonsai schooling of Japan it, it was pretty prestigious but she was um, she was so calm and she was moving these branches around and doing all, and I'm like aren't you scared you're going to kill the tree tree and she looked and I she said she looked at me and she said are you scared I'm gonna kill the tree and I said well I'm scared I'm gonna kill all the tree <laughs> I'm scared I'm gonna kill him and she said do you know how I with the difference between me being a master is and, and you being a novice and I said what and she said I've killed way more trees than you have uh, and it, it was at that moment when it hit me and it was like oh my god you know like like again mistakes uh, they're not they don't have to be bad. They can be looked at like learning lessons. And so sometimes I'll get, I'm saying that because I get information sometimes that will come through <clears throat> that doesn't make sense in the moment, or I don't understand it. Um, or, or I'll say whatever I think it might be. And it turns out that the information wasn't 
in inaccurate. It just it was it meant something a little bit different than what than my than how I was visualizing it. Um, so I've learned to sort of work with those things. And the only way to work uh, through the process of that fear is to is to own it and say, OK, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go for this and say and say what what's going to happen. It's a scary place because we're worried about hurting someone and we're worried our peers and clients and friends and family, they're going to judge us. And uh, when we're, when we finally are, when we're finally willing to let go of the, I call it my bull whip is what I call it. Cause I will, I, it's, I have been known to stand behind myself and crack a whip just because I'm a perfectionist in that way. But when I'm willing to let go of that piece of me, um, I, the fear goes away. So when I do readings now, it's much, it's much different. I'm not, I don't bring the fear that I'm holding into the reading with me. So, uh, a lot of times I push that part of me. It just, it's to the side, I guess it's, it's like, it's ego, it's ego and it's to the side. Uh, and I just, I just allow spirit to come through that way. And I have found more often than not, more often than not, when I do that, uh, I have no anxiety. I have no worries about anything. I just say what I feel, hear, know, or see, and and let the process take take the take its natural course instead of because fear will start um, blocking you, and then you're wondering, am I channeling my ego or am I channeling my soul? Like, what's going on here? And then you're in a fight in your head while you're trying to give somebody a reading, and it's awful. So, uh, and really meditating beforehand. I know I keep talking about meditating. I'll, I'll get to that, but it, there's just so many uses for it. And there's so many ways to do it that, but meditating beforehand, um, it, it removes a lot of that. And if you're wrong, you're just going to be wrong. Um, another, another question. And this one I've had a lot, actually, when I'm, uh, read on a different platform, I get this one all the time and it is, what is the best way to open my third eye. Um, so when I'm doing, I'm going to, I'm going to first to answer that, I'm going to say before I start uh, doing readings, I don't, I don't use my, just my third eye. I connect in with my heart. Um, and there's a process that I do for that. And everybody has their own way. But for me, I work with my soul star. Um, and I'm going to type a link into the, um, chat for you guys to look up there's the etheric tornadoes on here um it's soul one soul and then the number one dot org um but it talks about the etheric tornado and working with your central channel your your it's opening your channel up and it and it uses the soul star so it's the soul star technique that i use but i work with my soul star um and i connect it to my heart and then i bring my heart thank you martin I bring my heart back up to my third eye and and then I'll push the energy out so that I, I have a better, more clear seeing uh, than I would if I just use my third eye. Because I'm a firm believer that there's a difference between um, psychic information um, and seeing clairvoyantly. And I know that that sounds a little different. I know some people think differently and that's perfectly fine. But in my uh, opinion, and not one's not better than the other one for me when I'm doing clairvoyant work, uh, the energy is, is more clear than when I'm doing psychic work. Um, and even when you get into the mediumship part of it, the energy changes again. So it's layers of energy that I work with. Um, but for me, opening my, my third eye came from um, connecting into my heart. And again, you can just, if you'll imagine even your heart opening after you've grounded, centered, and you're clear at this point, um, work with your heart energy and pull it up to your third eye and push it out so that when you're when you do go to the, to give readings or you do want to connect more uh in with your third eye you're doing it from a place that's not only grounded and centered but it's it's from the heart which is which is love or um, there's plenty of other words for it but we'll just call it love for now um, and that will help to really clear out a lot of the other gunk that you might see while you're doing readings uh, another way is to uh, to pulse around here and this is in your mind you're imagining your third eye just pulsing and 
when you're working with it, you, that can be done during a meditation. Uh, sometimes there's binarial beats that people use. Uh, there's people use uh, crystals and all, all kinds of stuff. They burn different scents and they use oils. So again, I don't think there's a wrong way. I say explore, yeah, chanting. I say explore um, everything, explore everything. Cause there's like, there's, there's, uh, the more we know and the more knowledge we have that we can share with other people, the better. Um, and what works for me, <clears throat> excuse me, might not work for you. Um, another something else is uh, how can I how can I contact my guides or my higher my higher self? Uh, and again, I go back to say talk you know meditation and talking to them and listening. I think for a lot of people. They're expecting to hear a voice to say, um, hey, Susan, it's me, your soul, or it's me, your spirit guide, and this is what you should do today. And it's not its not like that. Um, for me, it's not like that. Uh, I can hold conversations with my soul, but it's not in a way, um, <clears throat> it's not like I'm sitting across from uh, my best friend and talking out when I'm hearing it like that. So I think um, symbols, I use a lot of symbols, feelings and knowing. Uh, so if you, if you can, if you can cut off what you think you're supposed to hear or how it's supposed to go, that, that that's the first part of it. You've got to let go of what you think is supposed to happen uh, and come in a, in a way that's of innocence, a childlike way where, where, where anything can happen. There's any possibility can happen. Um, and when people say, well, you just, if you meditate, you have to listen for the answer. They're not saying, listen, and then something's going to be like, hey, yo, Fred, uh, you're going to be late if you don't leave 10 minutes early today because there's going to be a wreck on 52. It doesn't work like that. Um, and if you're holding conversations specifically with your soul like that, it's definitely not your soul that is responding to you because your soul um, will come at you much differently than that and in a, in a way that because uh, a lot of the the questions that we have and stuff we want to know about the earthly questions um, it's not going to get answered <laughs> um, you know there's a sacred connection uh, between your higher self um, and and your and you and um, now again if you're wanting sidekick information that's differently and people are you know, I think that's real popular right now. People have, you know, spirit guides and um, angels and different stuff like that. And again, I say there's absolutely, there's no wrong way. So if you're comfortable with that or if that's the way you want to go with it, uh, by all means do that. For me, in my experience, it was important for me to connect with my own divine being before I connected to anything outside myself. And the reason is, is because I don't want to give my power away to anyone outside of me. I want to, I want to own my power uh, and, and own what I want to do. So um, I, I would suggest to start there, or at least that's where I started. Um, but also to look for signs like synchronicities or numbers or if certain songs are coming on or um, auto uh, automatic writing is really good or texting as a matter of fact the uh, the texting it for me um, I started reading doing readings on reddit um, and and it was all through the text and all of a sudden I was I would just sort of zone out and start writing these people were asking questions and I found myself being able to connect in with their energy and it was easier for me to do to start out in a place like that because there's it there is that anonymity uh, and I didn't have to worry about being wrong because uh, nobody knew who I was and I so I felt more relaxed and once I was relaxed and able to do those things it was so much easier for me uh, to, to do the reading and to be able to connect in that way so automatic writing is awesome um, and anything, uh, and anything, anytime you can do meditation, which I'm finally getting to, is super important. Um, and that can be everything from sitting, you know, people sitting in the lotus position and meditating for four hours and working with their energy. It can be laying flat on a bed and just centering yourself and grounding yourself and 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 working with your own energy. Uh, it can be listening to a music that elevates your spirit. It can be um, cleaning is a big one for me. If I start cleaning the house or 
you know, doing dishes or doing laundry or any of that monotonous sort of work. I mean, I am like in like right away. I don't know what, I don't know what it is. I listened to a podcast. This has been, I guess about like 18 months ago and it was Barbara day long. Um, and she was talking about, um, and this is a great way to center too, but she was talking about juggling and she was talking about, um, um, with it, I think the topic of discussion was like meditation and stuff like that. And she was talking about juggling and, and how that would, that would center a person. And I, I mean, I don't know why I thought that was just the coolest thing. So I immediately got some juggling balls <laughs> and I've been juggling ever since, but it's great. I, so anything to keep, anything to keep you busy. Um, Martin said for me, not being around the computer makes me a lot more intuitive. Uh, the state of mind that the computer puts me in keeps me from connecting, which sucks because I'm a huge nerd. That's actually a really good point. Not that you're a huge nerd because I don't think you are. But I <laughs> I, I think it's really uh, electronics and computers and stuff like that. I'm sensitive to that uh, vibration also. So there is there is some connection there. I'm not I'm not too sure about what that is, but it, it sometimes it can. Um, I think it's about being able to still your mind, but also if you have all these other things going on around you or you're sitting at a computer or you're, you have your phone in your hand, it is distracting. So it's hard to, um, it's hard to, in, unless you're, you know, like I was talking about earlier when I was talking about um, connecting with, um, I'm sorry, I'm having spirits already starting to come through to talk to me. Um, anyway, yeah, so, I don't know what I was talking about. I got I got distracted. OK, um, sorry, Martin. Uh, OK, so I do. I want to since the show is only an hour tonight because I'm by myself, I want to uh, go ahead. I'll kind of open some stuff up for readings here in just a second. I don't want to take up too much more time talking, but I did feel like that some of that stuff was really important. So. Um, before we get started, I'll reiterate, if you have a chance to listen to the Teaching Tuesdays show, the link is on intuitalks.com, um, and I think it's under hosts, um, and you can find you can find it there in the archives. You'll have to look through because there's a lot of stuff in there, but there's lots of information on that particular podcast uh, about learning, and it's all free, which is the best part. So if you can listen to some of that stuff, um, I know for me, I would wake up at, you know, I said this a hundred times, I'd wake up real early in the morning and I get to work. And usually I was at work around five in the morning and I would put my earplugs in and I would listen to podcasts until the rest of my coworkers got there. Because for me, it was an opportunity to really listen to um, other people's points of view. My favorite thing is listening to people talk about stuff that I either don't know anything about or that I completely disagree with because I, I believe that opening your mind is important. So uh, and some you can't argue back with somebody on a podcast because they're not going to talk. They're just talking about what they want to talk about. Um, OK, so next Wednesday is July 4th and I will not be here. July 11th, Renee Richards will be here with me on the show. On July 18th, Kathleen Moore will be here. I do have somebody tentatively for the 1st of August, but I don't want to say her name yet because she hasn't um, she hasn't committed to me yet. So I just want to before I say anything. So that's what's going on in July. There may be a last Wednesday of the month show in July uh, where I'll be by myself doing some readings and talking about some um, some different stuff. Also, if there's anything specific that you guys want to hear about or any type of um, person with any kind of ability uh, as far as esoteric uh, psychic stuff if you, if there's somebody you want to hear about just message me um, again I'm on Twitter at third eye Betty Facebook third eye Betty or energy readings with Shelby aesthetic <clears throat> I'm all over the place just type in my name you'll you'll find me somewhere um, all right I'm gonna go ahead and get so I'm gonna open up is there if there's anybody in chat that wants a reading let me know I am going to try to take first time uh, people tonight. And if there's anybody in the on the call list that wants to um, to have a reading, I see a couple numbers here. Um, then you then I'll I'll unmute you guys. If you want to talk, just press one and I will know. In the meantime. Let me write these um, numbers down so I don't get too confused by who's 
who's on. In the meantime, um, I'm going to be doing a couple of different things also in August and September. I think once the weather starts cooling off, I'll have a little bit more time to do some um, preparations for some things. I'm going to have some pretty interesting people on. I had mentioned a pet psychic that I wanted to have on, and that person actually had some things come up, so I was not able to get them scheduled. Um, but there, there's some other things coming up that I want to talk about. There's going to be, I did talk about the, the divination night. Uh, which will be really cool. And I think that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, but more than anything, the direction that I want to um, take what I'm doing is I don't want to just is sit here and um, and give readings all the time. I want to be able to spread information because I think I think that more than anything, knowledge gives all of us the ability and the power to um, to excel in life. So I, I do like to split the show up and spend some time doing some of that in the beginning and then doing readings on the second half, but not every show that I will have will will have will have that. I want to do a couple of things with some energy work. I'd love to um, have some people on to talk about energy work. Again, the the pet psychic stuff, the mediumship stuff, I think is also su super important. Um, speaking of energy work, we were we were talking about um, you know doing readings and stuff, and I have this little um, I don't know if you can see that in the chat room. It's this. It's a horse, I guess, but it's made out of metal. And they use these things to sort of pick the um, the hoof of the horse when it has like, you know, stuff in the hoof. They use this to kind of get all this stuff out. And I leave that on my desk. <clears throat> Excuse me. I leave it on my desk whenever I'm doing readings because I um, push uh, all the energy into this horse so it's not floating all over my house. And then when I'm done, I clear this uh, so that they, so that it's not holding that energy. So and I'm mentioning that because I feel like energy is everything and I feel like it's super uh, important to do that. I clear it with light um, and also that you can use the etheric tornado. You can use the violet flame. Um, there's there's lots of I, you can use your own heart to clear it. Some people use Reiki uh, or inner, you know, some type of energy that way. Um, some of you may be familiar with the different rays of light. Um, you can do some of that stuff. So I, I do that because it's easier than because I always try to clear everything before I get started and, and set the intent, you know, that I'm going to be doing readings and stuff. And I box myself in with the it's like a chrome looking netting that I use. So the stuff's not going everywhere because I have a kid in the house and he's sensitive and uh, he he can pick things up way quick. And uh, so I try to keep try to keep things clear around here. And I think anchoring energy into things like this or um, just whatever you want to use, I think is I think it's brilliant. OK, so I see there are three callers um, that have called in. If any of you guys want a reading, you can press one. If there's somebody in the chat room that wants a reading, um, just let me know and uh, you can you can. Um, you can get a reading. If you want to call in, the number is 631-353-4342. And my show number is 720. Um, all right. I'm going to keep going. I don't, I, get, I don't think anybody may not want a reading, and that's perfectly fine. But I'm going to keep going with some of my questions if there's not, um, if there's not anybody that wants one. Because I could talk all day about questions. And if you guys in the chat room have any uh, questions about anything, please ask. <clears throat> I've gone to um, I've gone to a bunch of different. Um, oh, I'm sorry. If you want to have a reading, press one to unmute yourself. If you've called in for a reading, you can press one to unmute yourself. Thanks. I'm glad somebody knows what to say, John, because I don't. All right, I've gone to a couple of uh, different of different websites, and I have to. Uh, I'm mentioning that because I've gone to a couple of different websites to sort of look some look some things up, especially in the beginning of, um, you know, I guess you can call it my awakening, um, because I was searching for information. And I'm, I was. I'm, that's me. I'm constantly. I'm constantly searching for information. I, I just. I, I can't get enough knowledge. Um, so I kind of want to talk a little bit about some books 
um, some really great books that I've been reading lately. This is my favorite one. I read this one all the time. It's the Mahatma One and Two, The I Am Presence by Brian Breton. Um, it's pretty heavy. Um, and I always say when you're reading, when you're reading books to take the information that you enjoy and that works for you and just leave the rest because again, you're your own individual um, and, and things are not going to be the same for you as they are everybody else. Uh, I, I've read this one a couple of times, the Sedona Beyond the Vortex. There's some pretty cool um, information in this one and they have some great uh, pictures that you can use for visualization practices. Um, um, <clears throat> yeah, here's another one, the tree of life and flower of life as they relate to the human figure. And if you're sensitive to energy like I am, um, you can look at some of these images and immediately feel the energy behind it and immediately understand and know um, without without really reading a whole lot what some of this stuff means. And of course, I'm, you know, I, I also say if, if you if something gives you a certain feeling and it feels right, then to go with it. I'm a big um, I'm a big advocate of being able to be your own person, uh, you know, while also being able to utilize the information that other people have already done. I think uh, it helps the, the wise uh, teach others to become even wiser. Um, the Touch of Healing was another one that I was sent this book. Um, it was really it's a really, really, really good book. Um, I have all kinds of bookmarks in it. Um, it talks about energy locks in here. Uh, it, it, this is about how to work with energy. Um, and it's just abs absolutely amazing. There's stuff about grounding in here. Um, and there, it's just so much. I mean, it's not one of those books you can read um, from cover to cover because there's, there's just so much information in it. Um, and then of course, I've been working on the, um, the book of knowledge the Keys of Enoch, um, it, this, you, you know, this is a super heavy book. And there's some wicked pictures in here. Uh, some of them make me laugh a little bit, but some of them are outstanding. I mean, they're just amazing. And you can use these to work with your own energy. There's also a group on Facebook um, that where they, where they study this. It's the, it's a Keys of Enoch study group or something like that. I can't remember. I'm sure you can look it up and find it. But it's just, I mean, it's amazing. There's so much stuff in there. So if, if you're curious about, well, how do I do this or how do I do this? A simple Google search will help a whole lot with, um, you know, the grounding and the centering and all that. But if you really want to get more into it, uh, purchase some of the books. You can do it. They're on, you can read them on your phone now, your Kindle, however you want, paperback anything. Uh, but, to, but again, it, take the time to, um, to expand yourself and to expand your knowledge and to understand or try to start understanding what belongs to me and what belongs to you. Because once you know the difference, your whole entire life is going to change. There's nothing, there is nothing that makes you feel more powerful. And I don't mean in an egotistical way, but I mean in an owning your own power than to understand that whatever just happened, whatever you felt has had nothing to do with you. And you can tell people that all day long, well, that didn't have anything to do with you. But if you can feel it and know it, um, it makes, I mean, it, it has changed my life. I think that uh, <clears throat> trusting, trusting ourself is what is, that's where we're all headed. That is where we're all headed. Um, we're so quick as a society, um, especially in the United States, we're so quick as a society to want to not own the good things about ourselves or the bad things. We don't want to own ourselves. We want we want someone else to um, give us the information and, and to help us. And um, when helping is fine, everybody needs their own teacher in some way. But your greatest teacher is always going to be yourself. And so when you start connecting in, um, the most uh, and best information is going to come from the soul. And there is uh, there's such a hard uh line i think for so many people where they want to um where they want to just throw everything at someone else because they're scared and i i've talked about this before and i i can identify with that so 
freaking much. I cannot, I cannot say I still, even still, like when I, when I get nervous or when I get scared, I immediately want to grab onto somebody else to fix it. Um, but for me, it was, uh, it, even when I was working with my own teacher, it was very much, I kept trying to, uh, I, I wanted her to fix things. I want, you know, I, I wanted her to have the power and then she could just fix things for me. And that, and it didn't, I didn't think that's what was happening. And, you know, I just kept thinking, you know, that's what you do. Everybody needs a guru, but it's not like that. There's no, uh, there's the best guru is yourself, is your higher self, is your, it's your divine, perfect being. And um, so that's why when I was talking earlier about some of these questions and I was mentioning, you know, the, the spirit guides and the, you know, the third eye and some of those things, that's why I kept saying, um, if you can, if you can ground and center yourself and be within and go within the information that comes forward, especially when you're doing readings, um, it's going to be a lot different. The ego gets moved out of the way. And what comes forward is usually uh, the divine truth. Um, how it's interpreted, <clears throat> obviously, is going to be up, you know, it's subject for whoever's doing the talking. But I think for me, a lot of times it's, um, it's a different part of me sort of takes, I'm still here, it didn't take over like I'm possessed or anything, but there's a part of me that uh, I, I feel more relaxed after I've done the grounding center work um, to be able to bring messages forward than I do at any other time. Um, but even more so for me, the best part that I've learned about being a spiritual being is that I am in it, this human body and I get to do cool human things. So I, I try not to stay in the cosmos, so to speak, um, all throughout the day anymore. It feels so good up there, but I'm here to experience what's here. And um, I don't want to get lost in the psychic information and, and, and get lost on a cloud of, you know, riding, riding the cosmic wave, so to speak. I, I feel like, yes, it is important for me to do those things. It's a part of my life now. But I feel like I've been able to integrate and balance myself. Um, but and this has only happened through all the stuff that I listed before. It's only happened through the process of doing the work that I needed to do to get through these things. So, um, you know, I mentioned earlier I had worked with with the teacher and I kept wanting her to do all, do all the work. And I didn't realize that at the time it, it wasn't like I was trying to manipulate her. It's just, I, you know, I was scared. Um, and what what ended up happening is she kept showing me that my power was within me and not her. So there what ended up happening as a result of that after I it was kind of like it slapped me. I'm like, oh, my God, I can do these things, too. It gave me a sense of uh, being able to it was trust. I was able to trust myself for the first time ever. And um, I never felt I never felt so good. So if there's any message that I can give you guys today, it is go in and seek the information within before you start seeking the information without everything and everyone is our teacher and it's meant to be. And, and people we're human beings too. And there's, there's people that don't understand some of, some of the things in the way that others do. And that's okay. What the most important thing about all of it is to be able to get yourself to a space and utilize these things, read the books, uh, not just the ones I was talking about, but read books, read as many as you can, talk to as many people as you can that have different ideas than you or have similar ideas to you, but practice different ways of doing the very same things that you do. The more information that we have together, uh, the more we're gonna evolve as a society. And I think if anything is going to bring us all together you know you always hear love is the answer and love is the way and it is um and i don't believe anybody walks around in a state of complete and and total bliss not anybody i know walks around in a state of complete and total bliss we have feelings and emotions and you have feelings and emotions that i i sometimes don't know if they're mine or yours and then i have my own to deal with and then i have to clear my neighbor's energy out of my house and then there's a, it's work though uh, but it's so worth it. And if we can, if we can, uh, if we can go in ourself, find our own power and help others to find power. I mean, that's, to me, that's what it's about, right? So, and it's about the experience too. The last thing I wanted to, um, the last one, a question I wanted to, to mention that I get, where I have gotten this question a couple of times 
on a different forum that I read on. Excuse me, I have a um, <clears throat> allergy thing happening. I don't know. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Um, is how will I know if I'm ready to be a psychic? <laughs> so that I got that question on Wednesday, and I and I kind of chuckled because I don't, I can't answer that for anybody. So um, when when they asked me that, um, I my response was I you know I can't answer that. Only you're going to be able to know that. But after we kind of talked back and forth for a minute, I realized that they were asking that because they were scared. And they were, they were, again, they were scared they were going to be wrong. They were scared they were going to say the wrong thing or tell somebody the wrong information or, and it was fear. So it brings up a really good point that my last topic that I wanted to talk about, um, we're either going to let fear run us or we are going to let love run us. And love comes in many different forms. And I do believe, uh, so does fear. I do believe that each one of those things has an array of ways that it can affect us. There's the layers. Everything I see is in layers. Um, it, it's it's so, I can't, there's layers in the layers, guys. I mean, there's no, I can't give a definitive answer to anybody about anything as far as when they're going to be ready to do something like that. that. The only person that can be, that is going to answer that is that is that individual. And how will you know? By, by doing it, by practicing and what if you are wrong? Well, like I said earlier, if you're wrong, you're wrong. And the I'll, that lady with the bonsai story that I was talking about earlier, I mean, it, it it drove home everything that I needed to understand. And it was just such a simple message. The master is a master because they've made more mistakes than the novice. The novice becomes a master by making those mistakes, by killing the trees. This lady was a Japanese bonsai master because she had killed so many trees and not in like a terrible way, uh, but in a way and through a process of learning. She and all those mistakes and all the things that she did, you know, that were wrong helped her to become this, I mean, amazing uh, bonsai artist. She I, absolutely stunning trees. She had one that she would work. I was like 200 years old and it was in this little tiny pot and a tree was like this big. And it was, I mean, it was outstanding, but she stopped fearing making the mistake because I said, I even told her, well, what if you kill, you know, what if you kill the, the old tree? What, you know, I mean, that's like the showcase of the garden. It dies. Then what? Well, then what? Then it's dead. And then she'll figure out what she did wrong. So the next one won't die. And it was like, it was so it was water off a duck's back. So she embraced her fear and she learned to use her fear uh, in a way that was that didn't make her feel gross or yucky. She used it to help her through a different process. So again, there's layers to that. Um, confidence doesn't doesn't come to people because without experience, confidence comes to people because they've probably screwed up. <laughs> and so, and so they know, they know what to do and what not to do. I think the difference for me, um, for many years was if I messed something up because of my, my ways and my perfectionism, um, I, I just wanted to, I just kind of gave up, you know, I was like, Oh, I'm, I'm terrible at this and I'm not going to be good at this. So I may as well just give up. Well, that's not, that's not, I had it backwards. Um, I, instead of embracing, uh, the changes and the things that were happening, I was feeding into the fear and allowing that to take me down under underwater. I felt like I couldn't breathe. So um, th th anyway, that's just a couple of couple of little things that I wanted to talk about. Um, I'm really glad you guys joined me tonight. And I thank you guys so much. I know this is just an hour long show. So I am very grateful there was actually people that came tonight because um, I was I didn't know if we were going to be able to get into readings, but I thought that it would be very important to kind of discuss some of those things. So again, I will not be here next Wednesday because it's the 4th of July, but I will be back on July 11th with uh, Renee Richards. And I don't have uh, the topic up yet that we're going to be discussing because I think we just, I think she and I talked about it briefly, but I can't remember what it was. So I haven't made the show yet. So I'll probably try to do that this weekend. And then the following week, the 18th, I shouldn't have closed this book yet. 
The following week in the 18th is um, going to be Kathleen. Yeah, Kathleen Moore. And then in August, I'm going to have a special guest also. I just haven't, um, I haven't, she hasn't committed to me yet, but she will. And we're going to have an awesome show. Speaking of um, automatic writing that we were talking about earlier, this is what, uh, for those of you in the chat room, this is what my automatic writing looks like. And it just a whole page full of scribbles is all that is. It doesn't make any sense at all. It's not even a language. It's just, it's just like I get a pen and I just, you know, scratch all over the paper. That's how I give people readings. So when you see me on camera giving readings and you see me violently swinging my pen around, that's what I'm doing. I don't know if you can get any closer than that. It's literally nothing. <laughs> it's just, it's just marks, but, um, but that's a great way to channel information. So if you want to, yes, divine language is exactly right. If you want to get in contact with your, uh, with your higher self, start by asking and setting the intention to do that. And then, uh, and then go from there. If you guys have any other questions or anything, you can email me or hook me, hook up with me on Twitter or Facebook or however you want to. Thank you guys again. Oh, one more thing. I did a reading for a guy <clears throat> on this show a couple of weeks ago, and I'm going to be reaching out to him soon. Um, but he has a, well, I, don't, I better not say it because I haven't asked him. He's got a Facebook page I would like to share with you guys. Uh, outstanding um, information on it. So um, I'll try to get in touch with him. I'll probably do that over the weekend. And, um, and, and then I'll share that with you guys the next time. He's he's a, a freaking genius. This guy's got uh, the information that he that he, that he he shared. I I can only read little bits at a time because um, I have to, it takes me a minute to process through it, especially energetically. Um, but it it's it's outstanding. Okay, thank you guys so much for coming to my show. I love all of you, and I will see you in two weeks uh, when I'm back with Renee Richards. All right, see ya.